Um, Ms. Kilbeck, if I could just start with you. Let me ask you a question about the First Amendment, if I could. Does the First Amendment apply to the medium of the internet, in your view? Uh, my understanding is that it does, Senator. Why would that be true, considering that the internet didn't exist in 1791? Um, well, Senator, it, uh, the Supreme Court has adopted a number of different tests for assessing uh, the constitutionality of different provisions. Um, the First Amendment uh, protects speech, of course, and, and people speak on the internet. Um, but I would adhere to the relevant test if any First Amendment case were to come before me. Well, I ask you because the Supreme Court has said something much the same in the Second Amendment context. And in the Second Amendment context, you argued to the Supreme Court that because a particular firearm did not exist at the time of that amendment's ratification, that it wasn't covered. The Supreme Court, covered by the right that is, the Supreme Court rejected your opinion unanimously in a per curiam opinion. That's the Catano case. I've got it right here. You've been asked about it. You know, what's interesting to me about this case is there's a lot of division on the United States Supreme Court about a lot of topics, including the Second Amendment, but they were, they were unanimous in this case. It's a very short order, two pages, not even, really, page and a half, in, in which they rejected your argument completely out of hand. And I, I just want to ask you, why did you make an argument that the Supreme Court said held no water at all, so much so that they felt the need to address it in a per curiam decision and to remand the case, uh, saying that, that the arguments that you made uh, were not to be countless at all. You didn't get a single vote. So, so tell me, help me understand, why did you make arguments that the Supreme Court said had previously been made and previously rejected by the same court? Thank you, Senator. Um, I just would like to clarify at the outset that I did not handle the Catano case when it was before the Supreme Judicial Court. The case was handled by the district attorney rather than the attorney general's office at that stage. In the Supreme Court, um, the argument that I made- Wait a minute, you, you didn't, the, the, the Catano case at the US Supreme Court, you didn't handle it? I did uh, co-author the brief in opposition to certiorari at the Supreme Court, okay. but not the Supreme Judicial Court. I'm is, asking you about the Supreme sure. Court, the Supreme Court judgment that rejected your arguments. So you've just confirmed, I think, that you made those arguments to the United States Supreme Court. Is that correct? Respectfully, Senator, the argument in that brief was slightly different. Um, the argument was that um, a stun gun is, we argued on behalf of the Commonwealth, not an analog to a founding era weapon. Which the Supreme Court rejected unanimously. The Supreme Court uh, held that the Supreme Judicial Court had misstated the uh, Heller decision in three respects. Um, but again, I didn't handle the case in front of the Supreme Judicial Court. So uh, your argument is, is that your, your position wasn't rejected unanimously by the U.S. Supreme Court? I certainly acknowledge, Senator, that the Supreme Court summarily reversed the Supreme Judicial Court's decision. Um, I, I, and I would adhere to the Supreme Court's um, holding in Catano and, and reaffirmance of Heller's statements. Here's what I'm trying to understand. The Supreme Court was, was, was very dismissive of your arguments. One of the reasons it was dismissive is it said they've considered these arguments before and rejected them. This is why they then rejected your arguments per curiam, unanimously. So I, I'm trying to understand why someone who has ethical obligations to the court, why you would make arguments that the court has previously rejected, knowing that they'd previously rejected them. And then here's the other thing that, that interests me. In this case, the person who had been arrested under this law that the Supreme Court then reversed on was the victim of domestic abuse. And I just want to read a few of the facts here. This is from Justice Thomas and Justice Alito's concurrence in that per curiam judgment. Here's what they say. After a bad altercation, that's from the trial record, with an abusive boyfriend that put her in the hospital, Jamie Catano found herself homeless and in fear of her life. So she obtained multiple restraining orders against her abuser, but they proved futile. So when a friend offered her a stun gun, for self-defense against her former boyfriend, she accepted the weapon. And it's a good thing she did. Because one night, after leaving work, Katano found her ex-boyfriend waiting for her outside. He started screaming that she was, this is from the trial record, not gonna effing work at this place anymore because she should be home with the kids they had had together. Katano's abuser towered over her by nearly a foot and outweighed her by close to 100 pounds. She stood her ground, displayed the stun gun, and announced, I'm not going to take this anymore. I don't want to have to use the stun gun on you, but if you don't leave me alone, I'm going to have to. And the gambit worked. The ex-boyfriend got scared. 
and he left her alone. You think she shouldn't have had the right to self-defense? Senator, thank you. Um, again, uh, the district attorney made the decision to bring charges in the Catano case. The attorney general's office and myself were not involved in that decision, but I certainly recognize- That you argued for it to be upheld before the United States Supreme Court. Senator, uh, the argument in that brief was that the Supreme Court should uh, deny review of the case. Right, um, but I, which, I which deny the right of self-defense to this person. I'm asking you why. Senator, uh, my duty as Assistant Attorney General was to represent the Commonwealth in that case when it came to the Supreme Court, and I did so consistent with my ethical obligations. Your duty is not to make frivolous arguments to the Supreme Court of the United States. And frankly, I question your judgment in what you did in this case, and I question your judgment in choosing to try and perpetuate what is manifestly an injustice to this abuse, this victim of domestic abuse. I yield the rest of my time. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be sure to see similar videos from Blaze TV with the added bonus of signaling YouTube that your voice and opinion still matters. And if you're looking for more great conservative content, check out one of the two videos suggested here.